Alrighty guys, in today's video, it's time for me now to give this front lawn a bit of a, I guess, a bit of a groom, a bit of a, uh, a bit of a de-thatch. It's looking beautiful at the moment. The grass is nice and green. Uh, it's mowing beautifully. PGRs, probably I think it's at about 80%, so it's probably due to apply uh, after the weekend. It's probably due to be applied again. It's been fed recently and it's looking really good. Now, to keep it that way, it's time now, as I said, to give it a bit of a, uh, a bit of love. Now, we're not going aggressive, we're not going to dirt. All we're gonna do is get through this grass here. We're gonna rake out some of the, uh, the dead material that lies between the surface and the, or the ground, the soil, and the top of, the, of the, uh, the, the grass here. So that's today's mission. Gonna run over this potentially in two directions and then clean it up with a mow and you shouldn't really be able to see much difference at the end of it. It's just gonna be a little bit thinner and a little bit easier to mow. So let's hook in. Right here, so this is the machine we're gonna use here and this is actually a Scott Vaughan 45 that I've actually uh, done a restoration or a rebuild, if you will, on quite some time ago and I've actually repurposed this one from a mower into a, uh, into a grooming machine. So you can see here, we've got our tungsten tip uh, grooming reel, which is a series of uh, vertical blades and these ones are spaced about one centimetre apart. Uh, and the height of this, so when we come to actually using it here on the lawn, what we're actually gonna do is, a lot of people sort of, depends really, it's not a one size fits all answer, but what we're gonna do is, I have this set just above ground level. Now the reason I do that is, is because we're sitting up on this grass level, ground level is gonna take us just a little bit down uh, beneath that obviously. So, you know, some people, if you're gonna regularly Room. Some people set it a few millimetres beneath their normal mowing height of cut. Now this here is a Santorana lawn and it's currently sitting at eight millimetres on the uh, on the mower. So I've got this at probably one millimetre above ground level and it should actually thin this out fairly nicely and just leave us with a catcher full of dead material and leave a lot of green material behind. So that's the beast that we're gonna use. Right here, so we're a few passes in now, as you can see, uh, we haven't done a great deal of disrupting to the grass, but you can see how it stood all up, it sort of raked it out. So when we come through now with the mower and we cut these, it's gonna trim all those little bits and pieces off, which otherwise would have gone unknown. So that's what we're sort of doing here. And then when you look inside the catcher, uh, you'll see we've got a situation, I'll bring around the sunshine. So you see pretty much bringing out all this dead sort of material a bit of green in it as well obviously but a lot of the dead stuff so that's what we're aiming for to pull out the dead stuff put, thin out some of the turf there um, and that will encourage a few things so first of all it's going to encourage as this goes through let me clarify as this blade goes through it does leave little nicks and cuts further down in the uh, in the turf here and that will actually encourage new shoots so it'll also give you a thicker lawn going forward a tighter thicker lawn now none of this is going to be affected by pgr all that will be fine so that's what we're ending up with give this a mow uh as i said after we've been over it i'll double double do, double double versi cut or double groom this uh so that's sort of what we're looking for and uh yeah happy days so it'll it'll uh, be thinned out be a little bit nicer to mow and uh, we won't have the uh, potential scalping that we get otherwise. And you can see when we look back up here, uh, there's absolutely no disruption at this stage. When we cut it, it might be a little bit scalpy when we cut it, or it might have a few little uneven bits, but that will, that will recover and it will be nothing as dramatic as uh, a full-blown renovation.
so we've been over it once now and what you can see here is basically just full of all dead grass so um, the lawn itself still looks nice lush and green but we've dredged up all this dead material now it's worth noting that I actually mow this all the time with a catcher so this isn't this is not clippings from not using the catcher this is actually material that's been pulled out of the ground down here and uh, and sort of thinned out if you will so probably aiming during the growing season there's not a one-size-fits-all answer for this but probably looking to do this every three to four weeks um, sometimes I get a little bit busy and I don't do it quite as often as I should uh, but this is certainly a, a much less uh, I guess a much less invasive option than getting a, a uh, heavy scarifier like the Scott Bonner 46 and really ripping into it this is more of a subtle way just to manage your turf and make sure it doesn't get into the scalping so uh, there we go guys, um, we'll tip this in the bin and we'll run over it again and then we'll clean it up. Okay, so that's our second pass now, and that's probably as much as you'd want to do. You don't want to keep going over it and over it because if you overdo this, you will actually sort of damage your turf a little bit, and it's the same about doing this too frequently. So if you were to groom every time you mowed, for example, actually start to get, a, a, I guess, a reduced quality of turf, because you are actually uh, putting little nicks and cuts through the stems, and that's going to do two things. It's going to encourage new growth, but if it prolongs and you do it time and time again, you are going to damage your turf. So it's a case of, Every lawn's a little bit different and it's a little bit of a art to know when to do it. I knew that this was getting fairly puffy and it was getting to the point where if I kept on ignoring it, it would start to get a bit scalpy. So I could have done two things. I could have raised my mowing height or I could have run over it and done what I've done here. So as you can see, another uh, pass over the lawn and we've got another full catch of predominantly dead sort of material. There's a bit of green in there, but of course that's gonna be a thing as well. So all that's left to do now is to give this a mow and it will come up very nicely. Uh, and then once again, in a couple of weeks time, it'll be, uh, it'll be on point once more. Okay, so time to now run over this and just tidy up the, uh, the lawn now with the cylinder mower here. Uh, ever popular machine, Scott Bonner 45 or Rover 45. Got my uh, front yard set to about eight millimeters this year. So um, yeah, we'll go over this now. This has actually uh, stood up a lot of this grass as well. So uh, this, this cut may be it may look a little bit lower than it normally is and it may not have quite the colour in it when we're finished but that'll all return so um, yeah hook in now we should get quite a lot of grass off this uh, I'll be interested to see myself actually here on in all we're going to do now is uh, continue with our regular mowing so we're probably going to now aim to mow two to three times a week obviously two times a minimum if I can get any extra in with work commitments uh, I will and I, as I said I'm due for a primo application probably on Monday so a couple of days after you see this video I'm due for another application so everything here is looking pretty good before we sign off 
I'll take you around and show you what's happening with the zoysia because it's really starting to fill in and I'm really excited as to how quickly it's starting to move for zoysia of course. Right, well as you can see, since we last uh, had a look at this, it's really starting to close in now. Uh, we've only got these tiny little gaps and the whole thing's starting to smooth and level right out, which I sort of thought it would. Um, so that I, at this stage, I won't be top dressing any of the hollows. The way it's growing across now, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, still mowing it with the Scott Bonnet at eight mils. My aim for this now is by the end of the season, if it's all covered in, I'd love to be able to get that Greensmaster onto it and uh, start cutting it at five mils and see what it's like as a putting surface. And with any luck, if it holds up for 12 months and looks pretty good, might take the plunge and make this my whole green, but we'll just take one step at a time. Anyway guys, look, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Have a fantastic weekend. See you here next time on the Aussie Lawn.